Hi friends, welcome to Crackers video series. In this video, we'll be discussing Dashcat 4. I know many of you would have found uh, some parts of it challenging maybe, but many of you would have been happy with your attempt in Dashcat 4, especially after Dashcat 3. So let's take a look at the different sections and see what we can take away from each section. So in the VARC section, I felt that uh, this was a good mix of difficult as well as easy uh, RCs. There was one easy RC, which was the uh, meatless farms RC. Most of you got most of the questions, right? And it was not very difficult as such to answer. But there was one difficult RC which was on sleep research. The key part of this RC was that it was not difficult to read. The difficult part was that every single question was inf inferential. So you had to actually draw inferences to answer the questions and that is where most of you stumbled. So if you found that particular RC difficult, what I would suggest is go to critical reasoning section, take a look at the questions based on inferences. What can be inferred, what cannot be inferred, uh, flaws in reasoning, etc. Those kind of uh, videos will help you in answering inferential questions. There were two moderately difficult RC sets. One was the common space production and one was the dystopian uh, this. See basically you should be very very good at the dystopian RC. I will tell you why because it is a very formal like passage. It tells you that uh, what was the context of an experiment, first part of experiment, second part of experiment. This is something which is very standardized and a template as such. When something standardized like that is given to you, you should not make mistakes. So if you are stumbling in the dystopian RC uh, set, I would suggest that you need to practice more scientific RCs, more RCs about experiments, more RCs about scientific research or scientific findings. Those are the kind of RCs that you should not make mistakes in as such. The common space production I felt was slightly difficult to read. And the questions were also inferential. So it was not an easy uh, RC set as such, but still very doable. So of these, I feel that attempted three RCs without any real issue because three attempting three RCs over here was crucial because the VARC was slightly more tougher than usual. It was not very difficult, but if you consider that, okay, cat level uh, VARC is there, this was exactly cat level VARC, but I felt this was slightly more tougher than dash cat three VARC. So if you think of it from that perspective, you should have done slightly less uh, well over here as compared to the earlier dash cats. If you're doing equally well as the equal, uh, earlier dash cats, I think VARC would then the uh, verbal ability per portion rather not VARC, VA section was, uh, VA part was slightly tougher if you are doing equally well as the earlier dash cuts, I think then VA is a strength of yours. So you should remember that, okay, maybe I am doing well in VA, I should do all that, uh, all the questions that are there in VA, if you are doing well in this particular uh, dash cut as such. Now this is about the VARC section, let us take a look at the quant section. So in this quant section, I felt that this was much easier, definitely much easier than dash cat 3. I felt particularly that this was uh, exactly as difficult as cat 2021. So what happens is that when you try to recreate a, any given cat, you have to look at the different years. I feel that this was in terms of time required to answer questions on average, the distribution, the difficulty level of questions, the spread of the difficulty level. This was exactly the case as cat 2021. And if you are doing well in these kind of uh, uh, dash cat sections as such, I would think that this suggests that arithmetic and geometry is your strength as such. If you did better in dash cat 3 than in dash cat 4 quant, it would indicate that you are more comfortable in algebra, modern maths and functions. So based on what you did better in, that would give you an idea of where, where your strengths lie. If you did well in dash cat 4, arithmetic and geometry is your strength. If you did better in dash cat 3, then algebra, uh, algebra functions, modern maths uh, is your strength. Now, in this case, I felt that there were fewer harder questions, fewer questions where you would spend a lot of time or waste a lot of time. So, in general uh, case, if you did better in this particular dash cat than the earlier dash cat, time management is an issue for you. So, that would basically mean that you are falling for the difficult questions, you are wasting time in difficult questions and because there were fewer of those time things over here, you did better on average. So, this is basically my analysis of the VARC section and the uh, quant section. Uh, Marathi will be giving you a brief overview of the LRDI section. Hi friends, my name is Marathi and I am the co-founder of Kraku. In this video, we will be looking at uh, the analysis for Dashcat 4. This is the fourth mock in our uh, Dashcat series. So let's get started. Now let us look at the LRDI section. In LRDI, there are uh, four sets. Two sets were uh, six questions each. So this was six questions. And uh, this was six questions. And the remaining two had four questions each.
normally when I start the LRDA section, what I do is I spend a minute or so in analyzing and trying to understand what the set is about. So I go through all the four sets briefly and then I make a priority order about which set I'll attempt first. My strategy in LRDI is that uh, the first set has to be correct and the first set has to be fast because then it will uh, remove a lot of stress when I'm actually uh, attempting the remaining sets. In this uh, section, when I looked at uh, the four sets, I knew that the Venn diagram set was easy because this is a four set Venn diagram and there were actually a lot of people who are not able to answer this Venn diagram set in our uh, database. But however, this is not a very difficult set. If you know how to represent the four set uh, Venn diagram, you will be definitely getting this set correct. And it is very important for you to know how to represent four parameter Venn diagram. Uh, you should know how to basically draw the uh, way in which you represent the four set Venn diagram. You can actually look at it in our uh, videos. This is an important concept and if you know this concept, you will get this set correct. So that is what I did. I went with the four set Venn diagram first. Second, I attempted uh, <coughs> the arrangement set, the first arrangement set which had movies. Third, I went with the puzzles which was the other uh, arrangement set and I did not attempt the painted cube set. Now painted cubes also, if, if you are first uh, discussing the four set LRDIs, Painted cubes, again, if you know the theory about how painted cubes should be answered, you will definitely get this question correct. I did not know it because of which I didn't actually attempt this. But if you want to get better at uh, painted cubes, we already have a video which was taken by Sile, which explains how you should approach the painted cubes. So definitely watch it and it is going to help you quite a lot. Now coming to the mistakes that I made. I think uh, in the Venn diagrams uh, set, it involved a lot of calculations. The calculations uh, involved a lot of additions and a lot of subtractions to actually fill out how many people were part of each of these different uh, regions in the four set Venn diagram. So those calculations took a lot of time. The second thing I think uh, which I made a mistake was uh, when I was assuming too many variables. Uh, if you go through all the clues at the start, for example, uh, I assumed that uh, the number of people who are part of all the four regions was say X. And based on this X, based on the clues that were given, I was trying to calculate the values of each one of the remaining regions in terms of X. So if this is x, this will be say 150 minus x, this will be because this is 150 minus x, this was 375 minus 2x and so on. So for me to actually calculate all of this, it took a lot of time. However, the value of x itself is given in one of the last clues. So if I had gone through all the clues, I would not have wasted a lot of time in actually calculating the values of each one of them in terms of x first and then substitute the value of x towards that. So one important takeaway for me and for everyone is that first go through all the clues, don't try to assume uh, any variables till you go through all the clues and first fill in the information that is directly given. So if you are told that the number of people who are part of uh, this particular region who are liking both A and B alone is uh, say 50, put that 50 and then come back and reiterate through all the clues. Instead of assuming variables first and calculating the values of the remaining uh, regions in terms of this variable because that wastes a lot of time and it wasted a lot of time for me also. Normally the first set I try to get within the first 7 to 8 minutes but this set took, uh, even though it was not a very difficult set because of the mistakes that I made, uh, it took me close to 12 to 13 minutes. That basically put a dampener on what I did next. So that is an important takeaway. The second thing is I started with the movies and directors circular arrangement because I felt circular arrangements will be easier as compared to the puzzle set which also was a similar uh, set. Uh, basically you have to fill in the different uh, parameters that is who has gone where or who is sitting uh, beside whom. So it was similar to an arrangement set. So out of these two, I had to pick one and I picked the movies and uh, director set. This again, I think is a mistake and I realized that this was a mistake. Why do I think this is a mistake? Because if you look at the questions that are part of this circular arrangement, you will figure out that there is not one single solution. Whenever you have one single solution to any arrangement set, answering all the questions that follow will be very easy. In this particular case, uh, there are multiple cases that are possible. There are many questions for which the answer is actually cannot be determined because multiple cases are actually possible. And I figured out that something like that is happening after I started the set. But uh, before I actually finalized on solving this set, what I should have done is first go through all the clues. Once you go through all the clues, you will get a sense of whether this is a determinable set or whether this is a set which has multiple cases. And normally if a arrangement set has multiple cases, I would not go there. Because then you are never sure about whether you got that set correct or not. And you will be missing out on certain cases. So I felt uh, attempting the movies and director set second was also a mistake. 
This, on the other hand, the puzzles which involved uh, a certain person traveling to different regions and wearing different clothes, all of those things, is a typical puzzle set which if you go through all the clues, you draw a table, go through all the clues and continue to reiterate through all the clues, you will solve this completely. And you can figure out that this set can be completely solved just by looking at the questions. So what I should have done is, after the Venn diagrams, which I should have answered fast, should have gone through the puzzle set, gotten this correct and then spent some time on the movies and director set. These three I think uh, I should have attempted uh, because I didn't do the painted cubes concept. If I was comfortable with the painted cubes concept, uh, which is not a very difficult concept, you have to just watch a few videos uh, and you will get uh, better at it. Then I think you should have attempted painted cubes. If that was not the case, I would recommend answering Venn diagrams first, going through the puzzle second and finally come to the movies and directors. This is what I should have done. Overall, I think uh, this was not a very difficult uh, section. This was a slightly medium to easy section. Anybody who is looking to score uh, very well, say 95, 96 percentile uh, in LRDI should be looking to score 25 uh, plus in this section. If you are able to get say 35 plus, then you are done quite well. And uh, normally like I have said, uh, in before you attempt any LRDI, there are a few concepts which you should definitely know. One is Venn diagrams. The other is painted cubes and there is one more which is spider web. Learn these uh, important concepts because it doesn't take you a lot of time to learn them. But a question uh, in LRDA can come from one of these topics. Venn diagrams have actually come I think in 2020. Spider web I think has come in 2019 or 2020. So these are important concepts and you should not miss out on any set which is easy just because you don't know the simple basics of it. So go through all of these concepts, they will help you quite a lot.